Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I sincerely regret not being able to be with you tonight because it is a big occasion, not just for you, but for what your organization represents. 50 years of profound and indeed deepening cooperation on the transatlantic relationship. It is a big occasion, therefore, for all those who join forces with you in this effort. And I'm lucky to consider myself one of them. It has been a real pleasure to work with you over the last years. The professionalism of your Brussels team and the whole network of 45 AmCham's around Europe is simply unequaled. Our cooperation, for instance, on the Transatlantic Economic Council, on the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, and on the report on globalization in Europe uh, was always excellent. And it has been a real honor for me to be associated with you through receiving the Transatlantic Business Award back in 2008. There must have been something in the air 50 years ago that led to a number of significant economic and political events for Europe. Negotiations on the General Agreements on Tariffs and Trade were officially opened in 1963 what later became known as the Candy Round, tearing down walls that fragmented international trade. Other walls had only recently been erected, and the same present candy came to Europe to deliver in June of that year his famous Ich bin ein Berliner speech. And the countries on this side of the wall in Europe decided to speed up their economic integration, deepening their customs union. All this in the space of a few months, in the same year that the American Chamber of Commerce here in Brussels decided to take the first steps towards what it is now an impressive and even unique organization. Fifty years later, we need our engagement even more than we did back then. It symbolized the relationship between the largest economies in the world, the value of which is estimated at a staggering four thousand billion euros, and a partnership between the two leading democracies that has much matured since the 1960s. The European Union's political and economic integration has considerably developed over the years, and its role as the first world market in value and the first trading power is widely recognized, something American citizens, political leaders, and especially companies that you represent today have learned to understand and appreciate. In the meantime, our cooperation with the United States has continued to intensify, both bilaterally and international fora, such as the G20 summit process that we have jointly created in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. From coordinating economic growth and job strategies to deflating geopolitical tensions or tackling climate change, we largely share common values, even though we may also differ on a certain number of issues. Last but not least, we continue to join forces in promoting a rules-based, fair and open global trading system. The Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership is only the latest effort in this sense. But what an important effort it is. And uh, you say it very well here in this uh, recent report I received from you that I've read when you say a US EU free trade agreement, a potential global game changer. By the way, I want to congratulate you on this recent report, The Case for Investing in Europe 2013, Why US Firms Should Stay the Course. I think there are very good arguments why Europe is so attractive also for America investment and, generally speaking, our economic interaction with America. So clearly, this relationship is not just about the past that we share, but about the future we want to shape together. So today, ladies and gentlemen, as 50 years ago, this is again a time for bold political decisions and we need partners who are firmly behind us and voices we speak up for Europe, like AmCham in Europe does in a very constructive manner. So I look forward to continuing our fruitful cooperation, but first let me wish you a happy and careless anniversary.